very good morning to all of you. Thank you, Ikliff. Thank you, Ikliff, for getting me here and for getting me to be recognized in this platform. Coming from the northeast of India, which is very far off, I was still surprised how I was nominated and how I'm here. Thank you, everyone, for that. A world without human trafficking and exploitation. That's the journey I took off when I was 17, when I was just out of high school. When I look back 25 years back, is this the journey I wanted to, to pursue? And today, I think I'm so glad that I pursue what I did. When I talk about human trafficking over the last 25 years, I've seen the numbers of young women from India, from Northeast of India and Southeast Asia, being trafficked to different parts of the world for labor exploitation, for sexual exploitation, and for numerous kinds of exploitation. And when I embarked the journey, I said to myself that we have to end slavery. And that slavery is a very important element. No good business can take place if we still have slavery. When we're talking about, part, for me, the journey has been numerous, enormous. Partnership through action helps create scalable, sustainable innovation for, for safer, better lives all around. This journey would have not been completed if partnership was not there. The partnership that we had across the country, the partnership that we had across the border, has made and enabled the possibility to work in combating child and women trafficking. We had dived down deep into issues to put an end to human trafficking. We brought together both the private and the public partnership over the last 25 years to engage into intervening, into an action-oriented intervention to address human trafficking. It was a very important part that it's just not about one sector, one community, but both private and public partnership needs to engage together so that we could dive into the issue and take away and eliminate human slavery. The impulse model and the impulse case info center, the heart and soul of the organization that I led in the last 25 years through the partnership was the model. The impulse model is a 12 pillars model. It's a six P's and a six R. The six P's is partnership, prevention, protection, policing, press, and prosecution. But all these pillars are engaged through a partnership and a collective leadership. Without collective leadership, the journey would have not been possible at all. And over the years, when the model got the world prize for the best innovation in 2012, we were given another challenge of taking the model across borders. And that was the time that the model got replicated in Myanmar, and then it went to Nepal and in Bangladesh. The whole idea of replication and innovation and scalability was that we need to avoid duplication of action. We need to avoid wastage of resources. And that was what the model was trying to do, get across the borders, engage with more partners, engage with more people to see how we can bring a better result, how we can actually endorse that duplication is a wastage of resources, and how we can really work collectively. And over the years, we have seen the challenge after working with more than 30,000 law enforcement agencies, we saw that unless until we apply and bring technology on board, we will not be able to counter this menace of human trafficking. I know yesterday a lot of speakers talk about technology, and we brought about a technology platform that provides and engages the law enforcement across the country and across borders with different country on responding to human trafficking more immediate, much more oriented in terms of faster and speeder because traffickers are mostly 
faster than anyone. So we had to bring this support system to the law enforcement so that the law enforcement are able to be much more stronger. And that's what we created, the Impulse Case Info Center software. It's a three-tire system. And this three-tire system connects the organization that works together through the help of a moderator. And it has different users. So in each country, the law enforcement in India and the anti-human trafficking units have applied and used this technology platform for the last three years. And we have been very fortunate that across the border, countries like Myanmar, Bangladesh, and Nepal has also endorsed to use this technology platform so that they could communicate with each other. Because most of the country who have signed the Palomar Protocol are supposed to act upon the issue of human trafficking. And they have to act it much more quicker and faster. Now, the technology platform has helped and en enable the law enforcement. It had helped to enable the service providers to analyze. It's an automatic analyzation of trafficking hotspots, routes, the destination point, and also the source point. Through the work of Impulse Model, we have dealt with 72,442 cases that we have intervened. And none of these cases has been re-trafficked. That was the success of the Impulse model in the last 20 years. The Impulse Case Info Center, like I've just mentioned, it partnership in a very organized way, using technology to counter organized crime. It's a case management, it's a comprehensive data, systematic documentation of the 6R. The 6R is report, rescue, rehabilitation, repatriation, reintegration, and recompensation. So it takes the laws of all countries into perspective when we are dealing with confidentiality of cases of human trafficking. Because confidentiality is of utmost importance when people's rights have been violated. They still have to live in the communities. You cannot stop human trafficking until women at the grassroots become economically self-sufficient. Now, 13 years ago, the new beginning was after the nonprofit was started, we realized that migration is a right. People migrate for work and they'll continue to migrate for work. Unless until we made the source point eco economically sound. And that's the only way that can actually help women to make choices. So we created Impulse Social Enterprise and that's when it came into existence that we give women the choice to economically be sound in where they come from within their own ecosystem and they have a choice not to migrate unsafely. What we did was weaving under Impulse Social Enterprise the strive to stop them from unsafe migration, mainstream them into livelihood within their own community has seen result in artisans having their own earning through weaving under Impulse Social Enterprise. What we did was we capitalized traditional skill. The area that I come from, the northeast of India, has rich and enormous traditional skills where home-based production is of very high value, but market access is not available. So we try to capitalize in providing that market access where we have 30,000 women who are engaged in the Impulse Social Enterprise today. And every day, the numbers are increasing. That means we are giving them a choice not to migrate, but to be economically sound. That's the most important part when we talk about unsafe migration. The solution, social entrepreneurship must have social impact and be measured by values and not profit. There was a question that was asked to me a few years ago, Hasina, what is the profit value of your company and your social enterprise? My answer to them was that you cannot look at the financial statement every year, but you could look at the social impact every year, how many families have impacted, and how many families have actually been able to make a choice not to migrate. And that's what the value proposition of Impulse Social Enterprise is. Enterprises not aid will change the lives of people, which is why I'm a social entrepreneur and not an activist. This is a big question about activism and being an entrepreneur. For me, social entrepreneurship is a journey that engages people to look for solution, to innovate for solution, to look for the resources around, and to counter that problem. 
It's just not about activism. What we have given as a solution is training plus market access and financial independence to each woman that we're working with. Impulse Empower is the artisan's product. Today, the 30,000 women produce these beautiful garments. They weave design of artisans, tribes have adorned people and their home for centuries. Impulse Social Enterprise invitation to several designers introduce them to classic woven by the artisans and give them a contemporary twist on the line of horticulture. Why? We have to start being conscious customer. It's time that when we talk about business, we need to be conscious from where the product comes from, who is producing it, and what impact the product that you're buying is actually changing life. And that's what we try to do at Impulse Social Enterprise. We realize the big economy is also a thriving economy where people are actually looking at a faster production. But here, what we try to get back is getting the impact of life of people at the ground. There's financial ind independence, no doubt about it, but there is a story behind it. Every product they purchase is encouraging, empowering women at the grassroots for poverty elevation. ISE Business Impact has been listed as the 15 social best social business impact in India by the Business Outlook. It features as a sustainable livelihood for vulnerable communities in the northeast of India, an enterprise that blends business with social consciousness, a model that showcases the internet, the in inherent art and skills that communicate can use to nurture and scale the economic growth, empowering women to earn, to be independent, and not to be susceptible to untold situation empowering women to be empowered. These are the artisans. They all live in their homes. They all weave in their home. They control the time. When they become 40 plus, they become a shareholder of the company. And the reason for that, for many years, they've been part of the whole process of economic development as they're engaging more young people in the process to actually prevent unsafe migration. They also have a right to become entrepreneurs themselves. Take the high ground and put an end to human trafficking is the motto. We need to get survivors back with marketable skills. Marketable skills, education for young people, so that they don't have to really get back into the process of being exploited. Come join hands with us to put an end to human trafficking. Thank you. I have the film, and I would love you to watch the film on the journey of 25 years of mine and how the coal mining that actually was recruiting 70,000 workers in unsafe situation was something that I got a public interest litigation with the government of India and got the unscientific mining close to save the life of many children who've been trafficked from Nepal and Bangladesh. I would like you to watch. Because the scenario of trafficking changes. Some are going for employment and they get duped. Some of them are you know, taken out of the region for you know, better opportunities outside and they get duped. Some of them, of course, are taken as labor forces. It's a, it's a mixture of all of that. Over the last 20 years, we have crossed more than 72,422 and the cases are increasing every day. experiences in the Northeast over the last 20 years has seen a different change altogether. When it started off, it, we see a lot of unsafe migration happening from the village, from the rural to the urban areas. And uh, simultaneously, that changed the whole shift where we saw a more of young people leaving the Northeast, migrating to other parts of the world, especially Southeast Asia, in search of you know, employment opportunities. Yeah. And lately we have also seen, uh, especially with the intervention we have done with the coal mining, uh, we have seen that Meghalaya became a destination point where children were brought from Nepal and Bangladesh, recruited in unsafe labor in terms of working in rat coal mining. When a report of cases comes to us, the first step of intervention is we record the case in our technology platform 
uh, which is actually being uh, used by the various stakeholders at the moment. And we alert the anti-human trafficking unit in our country to intervene on the operation. Now, if cases happen that they take place in the metropolitan cities, which we have a lot of networking partners, we coordinate their help to facilitate support to the anti-human trafficking units, whether to assist with filing an FIR, whether to operationalize support in terms of you know, rescuing the child with the help of the enforcement or the woman, or sometimes we also need rehabilitation linkages. So all of that takes us a second step. If people are coming to know of issues of human trafficking, uh, we as an organization, I mean, can be contacted immediately. And then we continue the facilitation to integrate the child or the woman. Then after that, we look in terms of supporting the legal intervention by helping them to apply for the compensation because the legal laws and rights in our country is available and that is something that we are facilitating an action that these people are enabled you know, to get the whole process you know, forward. Thank you very much.